Hey and what's up guys, welcome back to New Tech. After the release of every Samsung Galaxy S variant for the past 10 years, the hype basically dies down after a couple of weeks and then the very important question rises up, which is the more powerful of the two variants. As you may know, Samsung releases two variants of every phone, one that runs the Snapdragon variant of the processor and one that runs the Exynos which is built by Samsung. Now, the variant that includes the Snapdragon model is sold in North America basically and China I believe, while the Exynos is sold in most of the world, as in Europe, Africa, Middle East and so on. Now. It was almost always accustomed to the idea that the Snapdragon is always or almost always less powerful than the Exynos in the CPU department. But the Snapdragon basically makes up for a little bit of it in the GPU department with this Adreno GPU. This year on the other hand, it seems like it won't be the same thing, as some of the early benchmarks as you can see here are suggesting otherwise. The all new Snapdragon 855 is almost outclassing the Exynos. Now, some actually say that the day-to-day -day usage which means you know opening apps your run-of-the-mill tasks that you will use you might not see a lot of difference but for people that are paying upwards of a thousand dollars on these phones at least if you're buying the S10 plus or the S10 in some of its higher end variants you might want to get the best performance anyways because you're paying the full price but it might just not be the case at this point because it's not really going to be the same for this year as past years. The Galaxy S10 Plus running the Snapdragon variant is not only outclassing the Exynos in the GPU department, but also in the CPU. Some say the performance difference is probably upwards of 5 to 10 percent, at least in benchmarks. It's usually less than 5 percent, but I think it's not going to be that perceptible to most people, especially that if you buy the Exynos variant, you probably don't have access to the Snapdragon variant to compare it against, but I'm pretty sure over the next few days and weeks we will see a lot of comparisons from people on the web to show us how significant this difference in performance when it comes to the Snapdragon versus the Exynos. Now here are some charts again that I showed you earlier and they basically suggest that the Exynos is almost always un underperforming or over overpassed by the Snapdragon variant. If we look at PC Mark Work 2.0, which is a test, for example, for web browsing, you can see clearly that the Snapdragon 855 in the S10 Plus here is scoring 91.77, but the S10 with the Exynos 9820 is only scoring 78.67, which I would say is a pretty significant amount of uh, difference, at least for a benchmark. The next one is for video editing. Now, I don't know many people that actually edit videos on their phones, but again, it really shows you the peak performance of each uh, SoC in these phones and I really can't tell you that this is a great thing for Samsung because at least back in the day the CPU was always better on the Exynos and GPU was on the uh, Snapdragon so you were like well at least I, I got something but now it seems like it's basically being overrun in both departments. Here is a video editing test again in PC Mark Work 2 and as you can see the S10 which is the second position from the top it's scoring 65.45, but the S10 Plus with the Exynos variant, as you can see, is really down the, the list, you know? It's even under the Google Pixel XL, scoring 55.96. That's almost 1,500 points, which I would say is a pretty significant amount. It's really, it's really sad. I mean, look at this next one for video editing, which only compares the, the SoCs instead of the phones that they are running on. And you can see that the 855 is maybe a little bit under the 845 itself, but the Exynos 9820 is actually even under the Kirin 980. I mean, Samsung was really known to make great SOCs for the past, but now it just seems like they slacked behind quite significantly. This is a Ryzen 2.0 from PC Mark, which is again one of the most important components of PC Mark when it comes to representing the experienced performance of a device. The S10 with the Exynos again falls behind uh, the Exynos with the, with the uh, Samsung Galaxy S10 with the S8 855 scores 10,746 points, but the Exynos version, as you can see here, only scores 9,114. It's a pretty big difference. I don't know how Samsung actually could just release a phone 
with such a significant drop. I mean, it's the, the Exynos version. That's what we really have to look at is that it's under the 845, which is last year's SOC in this test too. So I don't know really, it's, it's a pretty big difference. Let's look at another one just to, to, to get the point across that this SOC is not really that good. It's like, it's almost Samsung didn't even update it from last year. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty weird. Um, again, it was a photo editing test from PC Mark. The, the S855 scores 17,500 almost. And then you have all the way down here, the Exynos variant scoring 11,412. 11,000. I mean, from 17,000 to 11,000. That is ridiculous. I mean, at least if the battery life from the Snapdragon version to the Exynos version would, would have, were at least that significant, you'd be like, well, I'm sacrificing some performance for battery life. But I don't think that the A55 will have that much worse of a battery life from its Exynos 9820 counterpart. So I don't know what Samsung did with this new SOC, but they really didn't improve it that much. It's pretty bad. It's almost like the years back in the Nexus 6, if you remember uh, that phone, which has the Snapdragon 810, which was one hell of a bad CPU. And Samsung basically at that point didn't even include it in the Galaxy S6, if you remember. And it was the first time in Samsung history to ship every phone across the world, even the United States and Canada, with an Exynos chip. So really, I, I don't know how Samsung just released this. Let's look again at another test, which this one at this time, at least it was not that bad uh, for the OS web preview in Speedometer 2.0. As you can see here, it's a bit better. I mean, it's not that, that bad, but you'd call it, it's okay. I mean, the S10 with the 855, with the Snapdragon 855, 60 FPS, I mean 60 in the score, it's pretty good. Then there is the S10, as you can see in the 9820, it's 58, it's okay. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure no one would be, you know, pickling over like two points in the, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the score department. But we have to say that it's really, really bad that the new Exynos 9820 can't even keep up, you know, with the 855. It's, it's not really, a small difference as it was like for example last year I mean this point it just blew past every single phone Samsung ever made Samsung was known for great phones maybe not the greatest performance not because of the CPUs themselves but because of the software and since Samsung really did some great improvements since I believe the Galaxy S7 when they started with the the Android 7 I believe it was they were getting pretty well but now I really don't see the point in getting uh, you know this phone at least if such a difference in performance matters i'm not really sure everyone will see it if you're playing i mean normal games like everyone you know these indie games of like flappy birds if everyone you know uh, has played it before or you know normal stuff i don't think you will realize any of these differences but if you are someone who's really you know like someone who pixel peeps in photos and from cameras you know i think this is going to be something that will turn off a few people i don't think this will really affect the general public which just gets the galaxy s10 because it's the galaxy s10 and then it's basically a status symbol sort of like almost an iphone but for most of the people that actually know the phones it might not be I don't think it's going to be for most people that it's a deal breaker. I'm not getting that phone because, but because the S10, let's be honest. I mean, it has a lot of good stuff going for it. It's a fantastic phone. Uh, the performance is pretty good. The uh, camera is amongst the best. This year they included three, so I mean, why not? The the RAM, at least this year, they didn't do like they did with the, I believe, the Galaxy S3. Some markets got like 2 gigabytes of RAM, some got 3 gigabytes of RAM. This year, it's 8 gigabytes of RAM across the board, uh, excluding the Galaxy SNE, which had, I believe, uh, which only has like 6 and 8 gigs, but if you buy different storage options. Yeah, I believe the idea here is that if you want a phone that performs your day-to-day -day tasks as you'd expect it from a flagship smartphone in 2019, the Galaxy S10 in either variant will not make much of a difference. But if you're someone who's like, you know what, I need to get the best of the best, the best SOC included, uh, I think the Galaxy S10 is probably not going to be a phone for you. But I don't think you should have it like this. I don't think you should look at it this way because the Galaxy S10 will have probably the best screen 
for this year uh, the best you know cameras it's up there I mean every time the Google Pixel is released they they basically eclipse everyone else but for the most part it's pretty great uh, you know I, I don't think the ultrasonic you know under under the screen fingerprint scanner it's a fantastic thing I don't think anyone would look down at that and be like oh that's not good it's pretty nice uh, some say it's slow it I, I read that it really depends that you should not press too hard on the screen you should just tap it and it just basically unlocks you don't even have to turn on the screen you just tap the general area uh, which you should get used to and the phone just unlocks immediately it's it's a pretty fantastic phone if you don't care about these small details which I don't think are going to make much of a difference for people who are on Instagram and Twitter and watch YouTube videos playing some casual gaming and chatting email which is most of us let's be honest here for those of us who pixel peep on photos and look for those smallest details I think that's going to be something you might want to think about and maybe even hold on you know who knows what the pixel 4 will look like who knows what the new phones I mean essential actually announced that they might actually release another another phone which would be pretty nice so yeah I'm looking forward to this year and how it will unfold again thank you for watching and uh, subscribe hit the like button turn on notifications and see you in the next one